Hello friends, this is Ralph and in today's video I'm sharing with you my first impressions about the brand new Behringer UBXA Polyphonic Synthesizer. So stay tuned. The Behringer UBXA is the reproduction of the classic Oberheim OBXA. Behringer's version features 16 voice polyphony with two oscillators per voice and also a keyboard with polyphonic aftertouch. Please make sure you watch until the end because later in the video I will tell you about my plans for the Behringer UBXA here on my YouTube channel. And now without any further ado let's dive into the UBXA. All right, my friends, we are looking here at the Behringer UBXA synthesizer. Three things were in the box. First of all, and most importantly, the synthesizer. Then there was a manual here, the quick start guide and the power cable. That's it. Okay. Let me tell you, as soon as I took this synthesizer out of the box, it was apparent to me that the build quality, in my personal opinion, is just awesome. So the synthesizer feels very robust and solid. It has beautiful wooden side panels on either side. The front panel seems to be made of pretty thick and solid metal. You can hear it. Then the knobs are very, very good. They are not wobbly at all. They feel strong and solid and move smoothly. Then also here, the pitch bend section. This is really nice. It feels very strong and has a nice response. So anyway, I'm very, very happy with the build quality of that synthesizer. And now let me give you some basic information about the UBXA. The UBXA is a reproduction of the classic Oberheim OBXA, which was launched on the market back in 19. 81. Okay, but Behringer not only made a copy, Behringer has also improved many, many features and added new features. Since this is just a first impression video, I will not go into all the details. To be honest, I also have to figure out how this synth works. So I'm just giving you now here a brief overview. Here you have the performance LFO section with the pitch bender. Then here the master tuning knob, the volume, the balance for panning sounds. Here portamento, oscillator to detune. Ah, before we go ahead, oscillator, I have to tell you that this has 16 voice polyphony. And each voice features two oscillators. And with this knob here, you can detune the second osc oscillator of every voice. Then you have here an arpeggiator. Here the LFO section, the oscillator section. Then you have here the filter section. You can switch between a 12 dB filter and a 24 dB filter. And then here you have the envelope section. One envelope for the filter and one envelope for the VCA. And now let's talk about the keyboard. The keyboard has 61 keys, five octaves, and the keyboard feels high quality. They are nicely balanced, the keys, and slightly weighted. And the most talked about feature of this keyboard is the aftertouch and that is the polyphonic aftertouch. Let me show you what aftertouch means. I press a key and there is a sound. The key is depressed and when I press the key deeper, the sound changes. And now I press a chord
So, and this aftertouch functionality can be assigned to various parts of the synthesizer to control it. And this opens up a realm of new possibilities, how you express your music when you play the keyboard. This is just fantastic. So, then the keyboard you can split into an upper section and into a lower section. Where you set the split is up to you. You hold the split button here and then you select the key. Anyway, I have put a bass sound now into the lower section. I have set the split point here at this C key and in the upper section I have a pad sound. Okay, then let me show you the arpeggiator. So I select the lower keyboard here, then the arpeggiator now will be assigned to the lower keyboard section. I press a few keys, start the arpeggiator, put it on hold, and now I can play chords here in the other upper section. Okay, then also I want to show you an interesting feature. It's quite common on other synthesizers as well. We go into the upper section where the chord sound is located. I press a chord. And then I press this chord button here. And now I can play the same chords with one key. And now let's change the bass sound a little bit. I go into the lower section and now I start uh, adjusting the filter a little bit. Dabbling with the envelopes. Okay, so um, I can do the same thing here with the upper section. So that's the original sound. Just for fun, let me add a little bit of reverb. So, and now I will go through some sound patches. Please do not judge me too harshly when I play here on the keyboard. 
The main purpose is to demonstrate the sound. I start usually with a dry sound as it comes out of the Behringer UBXA, and then I also route it through the Strymon timeline delay or through the Strymon Big Sky reverb. On the Strymon timeline, I'm mostly using the bucket delay. Bucket delay is something from the 80s, old analog technology. In my personal opinion, it just adds to this vintage flavor. I think sometimes I might also be using the swell preset and on the big sky, I'm just using the shimmer, a shimmer reverb. You may ask, why am I using a delay and a reverb to uh, demonstrate the Behringer UBXA sound? I want to show you how good the UBXA already sounds on its own without any effects and how you can even improve it even further when you add a delay, a reverb, or both. Okay, please indulge me.
These were my first impressions about the Behringer UBXA synthesizer. I am thinking about making a tutorial series about the UBXA, something like the video series that I made about the Behringer 2600 and the ARP 2600. Please let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in something like that. Anyway, you can expect more videos about the UBXA synthesizer here on my YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. I thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, peace.